Hi, everyone. Welcome. And thanks for coming to talk about platform events and how we can rethink our architecture um, using platform events. My name is Florian Hoon. I work as a technical architect at Mavens. And um, I started around 2008, 2009 working on the Salesforce.com platform. And so I've seen it really evolve from being a CRM application to being now an enterprise level platform. And that journey for Salesforce.com, for, for the platform, is really an interesting one. And I think that's why a lot of our system architecture is how it is and ended up as it is right now. So I'm guessing that a lot of you guys have been looking and working with web to leads. So this is kind of the first project that I had on a Salesforce platform is we have this new cool feature, web to leads, implemented and bring us our leads in. And the process and the system architecture at that point looked a little bit like this. And that was relatively simple and straightforward, right? We have a lead coming in, gets created, gets assigned. There's some automated vetting going on. And then we have our lead conversion. But then, of course, um, Salesforce, the use of Salesforce in the companies, they expanded. So um, we have, for example, an order management process coming in. And the architecture gets more complex. Still relatively easy, don't get me wrong but it gets more complex. And now we have an order management process. We want to create an order. And then we have maybe an integration layer to integrate with different systems. For example, a master data management system to make sure that you know, like the accounts that we create the order for are actually correct and are our clients. Um, you know, a shipping system where we make sure that our shipment actually goes out from the order. And then a payment system that we integrate with to make sure that you know, we actually got paid before we sending out our order order. And this goes on and on and on. And our system architecture blows up a little bit. And this is still a simple example. But you can see it's so small. I wanted to say it's so small that you can't read it. But the screen is pretty big. So you can actually still read it. But the point is, that's not scalable. You know, every feature that we add, we add complexity to our system architecture. So we add on and on and on, and it, nobody can understand everything anymore. And nobody wants to understand everything, and nobody should understand the whole system. But if everything is dependent on each other, you need to understand the whole system to make changes and make them confidently. So how do we make it scalable? we can use platform events. So a platform event, if you create your first platform event, you will find it very familiar. It looks and feels um, like creating an S object. Uh, the biggest difference is it is immutable, so it can't be changed after it's created. After the record is created, it cannot be changed. And what platform events like really open up for us is this event-driven architecture. And that's what you see here. So in an event-driven architecture, we have event producers. Then we have the event bus. So an event producer creates an event, and that event gets put onto the event bus. And the event bus is, is basically a queue. So it has a strict order. It's chronological. And it gets executed one event after the next, after the next, after the next. And then uh, we have event consumers. So you subscribe to an event, and the moment that event gets created and gets published and put onto the event bus, the event consumer gets notified and uh, gets, you know, like gets basically that event and all the information that that event holds. And that way, the event consumer doesn't really need to know about, who, about the event producer. All it needs to know is the event. So the dependency really gets gets put down to just the event record and the type of the event record. And so how does it look uh, on the Force.com platform? We can publish events. So this would be the event producer that we can do um, declaratively as well from processes, flows, 
APEX and via the API. So events are um, available on the API exactly as, as objects are. You can create them there. Um, obviously, you can't edit them because they are mutable. But, and then they get put on the event bus. So all of these events are equal. Yeah? You, can, you can create it in any way you want. And then you have the subscribing part, so the event consumers. And again, we have those four um, you know, like systems that can really, or four ways how we can consume an event. We can use them in processes, flows, uh, in Apex, and then commit D, which is basically via the API. And you should already have heard of that because it works exactly like the streaming API. So you can, you know, your mobile app can uh, subscribe to an event. And then whenever that event is fired, your mobile app gets a notification and knows what to do. And that way, yeah, again, the event consumer only needs to know about the event bus and about the event itself, uh, nothing about the event producer. So how would that look in our architecture here? So we are taking the order management system here, or the order management module, having a look at it again, and then just to simplify it, this is you know like getting getting the web to lead stuff out of there, out of our diagram, just to see. So this would be our module, the order management system. And what's the the really important part about this one that we want to want to be notified about in our other modules or systems is creating an order. So our order management module creates an order, publishes that event to the event bus, and that way, really, it doesn't care what happens afterwards. It doesn't care what the product catalog does, what the shipping system does, um, what any reporting tool does, or you know, like what happens in any other module, in any other of our system architecture modules. All at once, it's, it wants to publish to everyone, hey, I create an order. And so there are a couple of use cases. And I think the first use case and the one that we will see first really come into our systems and come into um, production for us will be integrations. Because now we can really make that easier for everyone. The order module publishes a create order event, gets put on the event bus again, and our shipping system, uh, which is on Heroku, for example, and our consumer application, which could be an iOS application, both subscribe to that event. And both get notified, hey, I created this order, and here's the information of the order that you need. And yeah, then they can go off and do whatever they want. Again, to emphasize that the order management tool doesn't know who has subscribed, and the shipping system doesn't know if the order management tool has created the order event, or if we, for example, replayed it for a debugging scenario. So this will be really, really powerful if you, if you want to debug your system architecture and you want to debug a very complicated scenario. Um, so here, for example, the shipping management could go off and create, prepare the shipping, and the consumer application could give um, the customer who created that order the notification, hey, you know what, your shipping is being created and put together, and it will be done for you uh, in three days. And then a second part to, or a second use case here is um, to stick to the platform. So not only we don't need to use integrations, and I think it's the first use case that really pops into everyone's mind when they think about platform events, but it really doesn't need to be the only use case. So we can publish the create order event on the platform in our order management module, but then our reporting module might want to do some processing of data to create a nice dashboard uh, for C-level ex executives. Or um, our billing management system, which is also on the platform, um, and which is one module for us, um, you know, like wants to create the bill and send it on to the, to the customer so they can pay. And then when the payment is done, we can actually do the shipping, not only create and prepare the shipping. So our, our own platform can subscribe to these events and can really handle them. And that way, we can modularize what we are doing on the platform. We don't need to have that big system architecture anymore. We can really make it small and simple. And then, of course, here to show as well, um, our Heroku shipment management system can also publish an event, can publish the event shipment. And then we can react to that. Yeah, so, and we can react to that on the platform. 
So there's really, it's not only an integration tool for platform events, but it's also a tool to create a new system architecture or new thinking about how we are architecting our systems. And then a little bit of a forward-looking um, thing. So what if we could actually react to Salesforce, standard Salesforce events? So a lead conversion, closing a case, escalation rules that get triggered um, that are really important for, for, our, um, for our business. What if those are standard events from Salesforce? And we can just su subscribe from any system we want to. And then to go one to 10 steps further, what if we have an event source platform at some point? So an event source system, just to give you a really quick uh, outlook to that, is basically Git. So I, I guess most of you are familiar and, and are developers and are familiar with Git. And uh, it basically means that the application state of Git, you can, uh, by replaying all the commits, you can get to any application state of Git. And what if we can do that in Salesforce? How powerful would that be for our business if we could just rerun all the events to a certain point of debug what's going on, change maybe one event, and then re run that as well, or create a new event and then run that. So that's kind of, you know, that could be a really powerful tool in the future that comes from using platform events and using platform events everywhere. But that's uh, obviously a bit in the future. So our new system architecture, how does it look? Well, it could look like this, right? We have our modules, we have our systems, our integrations, our consumer applications, and we got the event bus. And that's it. And we publish, we subscribe, um, all the dependencies are gone. Our CM module is just the web to lead in, in our example. The order management is, is very simple. Uh, every developer you hire, you can, you can give the order management and, and they can you know, run away and like in, in a week they are the expert for order management. So that's, I think, one of the big advantages of really going, going that way. So what do we do now, right? I mean, we have this architecture and we have this goal. So we have, this is a reality of our life. Yeah, this is every day. And this is kind of our dream, the goal. So how do we get there? What, what do we do first? And so how about taking that order management, taking one small module where you have a relatively straightforward dependency that you can pick out and you can say, you know, and then have two modules, basically split the, split the architecture up. You have the old module, everything, and then you create your new module or your new feature in this way and really decouple it and yeah, don't have any dependencies anymore except the event bus. So this also really plays into platform events, pretty sister DX. So platform events really play well with DX because DX wants us to create small modules wants us to create small code bases that we can handle easily and that we can then deploy easily. And with platform events, we can actually reach that goal. So it really plays well um, with DX and it will be one of the driving forces of um, you know, like us using DX, I think. So yeah, I just want to reiterate, go one step at a time. If you take your big system architecture and you want to put it into a platform events or an event-driven architecture in one go, you will have a huge project, a huge project on your hand, and it will be very complicated, and you don't have any experience with the platform events. So go a little, take one module, take your new feature, your new module that you're creating, um, create it in a module, create it with DX, you know, like use DX, and, and really, by that kind of get into that modern style of development that, that we are being offered now. I mean, I know it's new and it's, it's different, but it's really, you know, like enterprise level development and, and we, need to, we need to get there. Um, yeah, thanks for your time. Um, I hope that, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I hope that was interesting. I hope that you really uh, get thinking into, you know, like how you can, um, how you can 
access platform events, how you can use them for yourself. Um, I put my slides on uh, in a GitHub repository there. You can follow me on Twitter or GitHub. And um, I'll probably post them on Twitter as well, just to give you. And the, the uh, Trailhead platform events basics is really nice to just get into creating, creating a platform event, playing around with it. And it will give you more ideas how to, how to use it going forward. Um, if you have any questions, we have a couple of minutes uh, for questions here, or uh, I'll just hang out uh, around here as well. Uh, maybe around there, because there will be coffee, actually. And um, yeah, just come talk to me about BX platform events. Yeah, so the question um, was, what's the advantage of having a lead conversion platform event instead of a streaming API push topic, right? So um, to be honest, right now, there's probably not a huge uh, advantage. It's you know like making your uh, architecture linear, so using the same architecture for, um, you know, like for everything. So that you don't use, oh, here we're using streaming API, here we're using the platform events. But I think it's, um, so it was an easy example. You know, lead conversion is a, a standard Salesforce event that everyone knows. And so it, it was my go-to easy example as, you know, we could have these standard events coming from Salesforce. And I think we will see that coming in the future. I don't know how soon. And then we can, you know, like really see what we can do with them. Yeah. Anyone else? Cool. Thanks. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'll hang out over there. Thank you.